Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and if this is your first time here, welcome to Booked and Busy. So today I am going to be filming the makeup and books tag. So I've got the question, I've got the books. I actually filmed this video like way back at the beginning of my channel. Um, I think the video had like 23 views so I can safely assume that most of you all have not seen it. Um, it's like private now anyway but uh, as a person who wears makeup and often gets like comments and questions about my makeup, I thought this would be like a great time for me to redo it. Uh, so I have all of my books here. I have my makeup here and I'm just going to get into it because I think there are only like 12 or 13 questions and I definitely have more than like 12 or 13 products I use. I ask people for questions on like Twitter and Instagram and I got a couple, not that many. So I thought that's a perfect amount for me to like splice in into this video whilst I'm doing my other makeup steps just so you can get to know me a little bit better as well because some of the questions are bookish and some of them are not. So I have the questions pulled up on my phone right here and let's go ahead and get into it. So the first question is about primer and primer is the first step that I do in my makeup after I do my skincare and primer is a book that left a lasting impression. So for primer I am I have two that I mainly use. I use the Too Faced Hangover RX primer and more recently I've been using the Milk Hydro Grip and I'm going to be using this one today and then I'll be trying out a new foundation which I don't recommend when you're like filming a video about your makeup. Um, so I'm going to put this on and I prime my whole face. I like this one because it like makes my skin pretty tacky. Maybe I should, should I zoom you all in? Let's see. Mm, I don't know how much I need y'all in my business like this though. So I think that's a little better. So book that left a lasting impression let's talk about the shadow of the wind by carlos ruiz Zafon. this one is like a historical fiction mystery about this young man named daniel he and his father owned a bookstore and when daniel's about 11 his father takes him to the cemetery of forgotten books where books go to be preserved and sometimes they're often very rare copies if not the last copy in existence and daniel finds this book called the shadow of the wind and he takes it out, he reads it, and he just falls in love with it. It's like the best thing he's ever read. And so he sets out to find more works by this author. And then when that is happening, he realizes that um, someone is systematically destroying all the copies of this book and all the author's other works. And he kind of gets embroiled in like a, a, a big murder mystery plot, kind of. Uh, just so many things. And that story is just so dynamic, so engaging. Um, it's just so good i highly recommend an audiobook it takes place in like 1940s spain i want to say and it is just it's so good like i think about the book all the time i haven't continued on in the series yet but i want to and i plan to very soon i actually like started the second book right after reading the first book uh and then my whole from the library just went back and i just haven't gone back to it but i do actually want to reread that one and then continue on with the rest of the series so Going to my next step, so because I'm black and I have hyperpigmentation, if you're not aware that is like a, some of the areas of my face are darker because my skin is prone to doing that, I color correct so that when I put my foundation on, it doesn't leave like a shadow or like a gray cast. So for my skin tone, an orange color corrector is ideal. So I use this one from NYX. I've used one from like MAC before. A couple different brands um, that I like is not like something that has to be a certain brand i do have products like that but this isn't one of them so this is where i'm going to pop in one of the questions so what I'm, i do is i spray my brush and this is a milk hydro grip reset and refresh spray i use whatever spray i have on hand i just spray it i love the like nozzle on this one and then i hit the areas as you can see like i use this quite a bit i hit the areas that i usually have high pigmentation so I just shaved my face, so my makeup should go on pretty easy because your peach fuzz and mustache and all the other stuff definitely make your face look a little bit darker than it actually is. So I have the questions all like saved on my phone, but let's just go because I posted a thing on my community tab and I think I have one question there so we can go ahead and get that one. And this is a question I get a lot. So it says, Michelle asked, how do you read so much so fast and still have time for other things? So thank you, Michelle, for your question. Uh, I do get a lot of questions about how I read, what, like my reading routine, all of that. So here's the thing. 
I don't have a reading routine. I think the biggest thing is that reading is a habit for me. Reading is something that I do almost every single day. Mo like, if I count it out of 30 days, there might be two days where I don't read, if that, but that's rare. Um, because I enjoy the act of reading. So, like, I feel like there are a couple different hobbies under the reading umbrella. So, like, people that like to buy books, I'm one of those. People that like to read books, I'm also one of those. People that like good stories. And those are different. Um, people who like good stories, because someone asked me, well, you haven't been enjoying a lot of the books you've been reading lately. I'm like, yeah, I haven't, but I enjoy reading itself, so it's fine. So even when I'm not loving the books that I'm reading, because I love the act of reading itself, I still enjoy that. So when I have downtime at work, I pick up a book. When I'm on my commute or I'm, you know, when I was commuting a longer distance, I'm listening to an audiobook because I, I listen to the same music. So I listen to the same, like, 12 songs over and over again, I would say. So I listen to an audiobook. When I'm in between classes, I read my book. I carry a book on me all the time. And if not a physical book, I have my Kindle app and my or my actual Kindle on me. So I read... I read pretty quickly, but I'm not the fastest reader. For example, like Monty, my friend Monty from It's Monty Price, he reads much faster than me. Like when we do like sprints, in a 20 minute sprint, he can read like 50, 60 pages. In a 20 minute sprint, depending on the book, I can read anywhere from 20 to 50 pages. But 50, 60 pages, more so if it's like YA middle grade, my usual adult fantasy, I can read like 20 to 35 pages in like a 20 minute time frame. But the difference between myself and Monty, which is why I read more than him, is because I read every single day. He does not. Um, hobbies, I... I don't know how many hobbies I have. I'm not a big hobbyist type of gal. I have a very active social life. Um, and I like to go out and I like to travel and things like that. But, I mean, I just make time for reading. That's really all that is. I just make the time because it's something that I enjoy doing. So, yeah. Alright. So, I have color corrected and like it looks a little bit orange but also one thing is my face definitely looks to be more one toned um which is the goal and sometimes I use a lighter color like a bit more of a peachy but I have a little bit of a tan and this is just the one that I have on hand also look if I have an acne scar or something I'll do this and put conceal over it and then we're good to go so the next question is for brows, um, I don't usually do my brows next, but we can. Um, but I clean up my brows first. The first thing I do is clean up my brows, especially right now because I need my brows done. So let me pull up a question from Twitter. I think I maybe have one or two questions from Twitter, but the majority of the questions did come from Instagram. Okay, so Book Bay Nia asked, how do you determine how you write a book? If y'all are interested in this a little bit more, I can give you like a whole video on how I rate books. Just let me know if that's something that the people want. But first, we got to clean up these crusty eyebrows. So concealer that I use, I have three that I mainly use, but I use them for different things. So my primary concealer is the Too Faced Born This Way. And then lately, as you can see, I've really, really been loving the Rare Beauty since this came out. Like, it's been heavy in rotation. But the other concealer, I have, like, my makeup set up here. Oh, there it is. The other concealer that I use to really brighten and like pop, especially if I have like a dark smoky eye, is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. This one is a little bit brighter than the others. So I rate on the five star system and I do not do half stars. I do not do half stars. So a five star book is a book that I loved. I love this book. Another one thing that really gets a five star out of books that may that might not have been a five star otherwise if you can surprise me. Um, a book can be going real, be a three or four star, you know, more likely a four star. And then at the end, if I'm surprised by the ending, you might get that five star. A book that I love, a book that I just can't wait to tell everyone about, a book that I recommend highly. That's a five star read for me. A four star read, a book that I really enjoy. I had a fun time reading. Um, I really recommend, but I may have had an issue too with it or it just didn't impact me quite as much. I don't feel like I'm going to think about it 
quite as often as I would a five star read, that's how you get a four star. Um, a three star read, I know there's a three star read if I don't have anything to say about it, which is weird to say out loud, but three star reads, I'm just like, it was fine. And then I just don't really have anything else to say. I don't have any complaints. Like, it was fine. It did some things well. It did some things that, uh, but it was okay. Well, it was fine. It was good. It was enjoyable. I enjoyed my time with it. It's not something I'm going to think about that often. That is a three-star read for me. A two-star read is a book that I have issues with. I have a lot of problems with it. I struggled to get through it. I didn't enjoy certain parts of it. Um, you know, I just it, I didn't have a great time with it and it's not something I would recommend or read again usually some books I recommend like if, if you like this thing you might like this book but other books I personally recommend them because I enjoyed them and that's a little bit different so that's a two-star read a one-star read is a book that I hated a book that I absolutely hated I I pushed myself through it I did not enjoy it the writing was not great the characters weren't great um I am an equal parts character and my mirrors right here i'm an equal parts character and plot driven reader but i will say it's probably like 60 40 and that 60 is for characters like i can read a story that is you know has a, a good plot but the plot in the background is really just about the characters i feel like the far seer trilogy is like that um and that, that book is more like, or that series is more likely to be successful for me than a book that has a really, really, really great plot. But I don't particularly care about the characters. But there are books like To Sleep where it's like, okay, the characters are fine, whatever. But the story, the plot, the world, the world is really where you get me. Um, where that is like the shining star. So let me answer another question while I'm still cleaning up my brows. Um, Danielle... Yeah, 85 asked me, what was the book that first got you into reading? I should have grabbed it. You know what? Let me go grab it. The book that I actively remember just, like, I've always been a reader, but the book that I first remember, like, falling in love with was this one. This is The Wide Window, the third book in the series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket. And this was the first book that I read in that series. I remember I was at, like, my... I was like a gifted and talented student in school and we were I had like a pull-out program where two or three days a week I would go to like another school and get like specialized instruction and stuff and in the library at that school this was when I was in Miss Johnson was what fourth grade was Miss Johnson Miss Johnson's class and she had a copy of Lemony Snicket this, this is the first book I said I was like oh this title sounds really interesting I read that book and I devoured it and then I had to get all the others in the series and I actually like was a very chaotic child at this point is like I read them out of order so like whatever books I could get my hands on those are the ones that I read and then later on once I was able to like get all the books then I read them in order I like reread them in order and I Sunny Klaus Violet Count Olaf I love Count Olaf that was my where my love of villains began um and that book just really did it for me uh, I want to reread it I because I, I don't I, I probably haven't read it since elementary school um but I just love that series so much and I just think it would be a great reread all right, so now that I've cleaned up my brows, we've got a little bit more structure, and I'm going to actually do my brows. Um, we can get into the brow book. The brow question. So the brow question is a book that you think everyone should read, and for that one, I'm going to say The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I got this book for my birthday from Chanel, so thank you to her once again. This book was really impactful, and it really discusses a lot of like really important themes about like womanhood and growing into yourself and like the male gaze and you know all these things like that that I think a lot of young people would really benefit from reading and I think that older people will benefit from reading as well but specifically young people young women who see this and realize that like the things that they are going through is not you know just them they're not the only people experiencing this and young young boys reading this and seeing like what their objectification how that makes women feel and and how that makes them uncomfortable and like seeing it in a way like this is inverse so it's a way that's like extremely accessible I think um and I think that that will be really you know a good book for the, for, for the people for the youth specifically I'm gonna do my brows and then I'm gonna go to the next question because I need to focus uh brow products that I'm gonna be using today 
Uh, I use a, a wide variety, but um, these days I mainly use pencil. So I'm going to be using the <clears throat> Anastasia Brow Wiz in the color chocolate. And I'm going to be using the Kat Von D Signature Brow. I love that somebody like snatches out my brow hairs in dark brown. Start with the darker one to give myself that definition. And then I'll go in with the lighter one. Alright, so my brows and I have a lot of beef because the shape that I like my brows to be is not the shape that they grow in. So, uh, and also I need my brows done really badly. I haven't gotten them done since before I went on vacation and that was literally a month ago. And my natural brows are very big and bushy, but like thin. I don't know how to describe it. Well, I have lots of hair, but it's very light. Let's go with that. So it looks like there's not a lot of brow hair. Okay, so the next question is um, foundation, favorite first book in a series. And so, uh, oh, and if you're wondering what sponge I use, this is the Tarte sponge. This is the Tarte sponge. So favorite first book in a series, let's talk about The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This is the first look in the Broken Earth trilogy. This is like a groundbreaking trilogy. The entire trilogy won the Hugo Award in each year that it came out. This book, the other two books are good, but that is definitely the best book in the whole series. Not just in my opinion, but in like the, the general opinion. Because she does some narrative things that I just did not see coming that surprised many people. The way the that the narratives um, are so different and the way that they all come together and just the storytelling devices that she used even with like the utilization of like second person pov um it's just it's well done so the foundation i'm going to be using today is going to be the kat von d good apple foundation looks like this this is like a new one it, like tiktok girlies and all the makeup girls are going crazy over this one so i, I found a shade that might be my shade i thought i'll try it but the past couple months literally like the last seven eight months i've been using the uh rare beauty foundation monty also put me on uh and i've just been loving that so i'm gonna grab my foundation brush this is a cream sheer medium finish i'm using more of a medium full cover type of gal uh, but i always spray my brush as well and i'm literally just gonna like pop that off but yeah, so the fifth season is also the Visibly Book Club book for the month of May. I'm going to be rereading that and discussing it with Elena from Elena the Great. But we're going to see what this foundation is hitting on, okay? And I'm like doing like a try-on kind of on my like private Instagram. I'm private, but like my personal Instagram that's not bookish. So I'm just going to put this in there a couple of times. I usually apply my foundation with a brush. And all the girls have been doing that little thing right there. Let me zoom y'all in. The undertone of that one is looking a little sketch. But we're going to see. Because it's not full coverage. And obviously there is orange product underneath it. So some of my foundations are olive toned. Like my Nari Sheer Glow. But we're just going to see what it looks like. Because if not, I'm going to just take it back to Ulta because, you know, with the pandemic and everything, you can't, like, try foundations on the store or, like, touch them to see if they're your shape. Mm. 
can see, I don't know if you can see, but like this area right here is a little bit darker and that is a hyperpigmentation. And because this doesn't have a lot of coverage, it's not really covering it. You have not read the fifth season, 10 out of 10 recommend. And also the um, audio book is fantastic. Robin Miles' narration is like chef's kiss. Like the first time I listened to the, the uh, first time I read the series, I listened to it exclusively on audio. 10 out of 10 recommend that. And on my reread, I'm gonna be reading it physically, but I'm just so happy to have had the experience of listening to it. And I'm gonna go over my eyes too because my eyes are obviously a little bit darker and I color corrected my eyeballs. And you wanna go up under that chin. Make sure you get those ears, honey, so that you don't have like very clear, I don't know if this is necessary for, yeah. So you don't have very clear lines of demarcation where like your makeup stops. If you don't wear a lot of makeup, I don't think that matters, but if you are going for like a full face, then, you know, I think you should do that. So I'm gonna put just a little bit more right here under my eyes and on my nose. Okay, next question is for concealer and it is a character I wish didn't exist. We gotta go to the Green Bone Saga and talk about Barrow. Um, Jade City, first week in the Green Bone Saga followed by Jade War and the upcoming Jade Legacy comes out in November. Go ahead and get your pre-orders in. Um, so, I talked about Jade City quite a bit. I have reviews for both Jade City and Jade War on my channel. And you can expect one on Jade Legacy when I read it. So, I conceal. And I start off with this one. This is like a very tame one. So, the three concealers that I use all serve very different purposes. And they all like have... This is like more full coverage. This is more of a medium, sheer, like a very lightweight coverage. And then this one is full coverage as well, but it's very light. So I'm going to use a little bit of that. And um, I usually let this like sit for a second and then blend it out so I get more coverage. So J City is a uh, 1970s analog of Hong Kong, but like Asia gangster fantasy urban fantasy and we follow the call family the no peak family and they are you know the two families in control of like the jade in on this island of kekon and they're kind of going kind of getting started in a war which we're going to proc to win a lot of things and there's one character barrow who is literally a snake like i cannot stand him i want him to die um he is the harbinger of death and destruction <laughs> in this series and it's like you ever met a character that's so useless and like but they do so many things to ruin everything that's him i need him to choke okay you ever think of it like he is like slippery like a roach anything that can happen he finds a way to weasel his way out of it and it is so frustrating you're just like i need this character to go away and so I put my concealer in the center of my face on the high points and so that it's balanced as well. And also I want to put a little bit extra light on my smile lines because your girl smiles a lot. And my smile lines be popping out. And we're trying out new foundation so I don't need that. Um, so yeah. I wish Barrow did not exist. And that's that on it. I feel like most people dislike Vero unless you're like a weirdo, like Monty. But otherwise, most people dislike Vero. All right, so that's the first concealer. I'm not gonna use the rare today because I am going for more of a glam look. But I'm on like natural-ish makeup days or like if I'm going for something really soft, then I'll use that one. So this is the color prop one, and you'll notice that it's like extremely light. So I just put a little bit of that. To brighten that's it and I don't let this one sit either just blend that one straight on out so let's go back to Instagram and answer another one of those Instagram questions um the next one is from MJ and it says if you could choose a champion to fight on the quarter swords who you pick so if you're unfamiliar the quarter swords is the like battleground or like the dual center you would kind of say in the faithful and the fallen series by john gwen so like, you can challenge someone to the quarter swords and like it's kind of 
not to the death, but it's kind of how you decide who is a better warrior, and it can decide like, a lot of disagreements, like a duel, basically. Um, and honestly, I'm gonna choose a character from that series, but like. If you're a smart person, there's only one good answer, I think. There's maybe like a secondary good answer, but like the obvious answer is Gar, Garrison, Ben Tuckle, baby. Like, listen, Gar is that man. He is a king. He is a character that is so near and dear to my heart. I'm absolutely obsessed with him. He he just, he is such a strong, like silent type and such an amazing like father figure and an amazing swordsman the jahar are all amazing swordsmen but like he was clearly the best and like he's an amazing teacher and he was just fantastic like gar is hands down my favorite character from the faithful and the fallen and i just love him so much uh next thing is powder and it is your favorite last book in a series so i don't powder right after concealer i do my cream products first but i'll go ahead and tell you my favorite last book in the series favorite last book in the series is morning star by pierce brown this is the third book in the red rising trilogy uh or in the first era first saga of red rising because there is a continuation series that book hurt me honey i cried so much reading that it was such an emotional read for me um i'm gonna contour and work put my cream blush on it was such an emo ew what's that it was such an emotional read for me um it was such a satisfying conclusion to the story um so many things happened so many twists and turns and like after the end of Golden Sun, if you know, you know, like, you were going into Morningstar so stressed. I honestly couldn't have imagined having to wait a whole year to get that story. I would not have been okay. So, I am using this uh, foundation and concealer stick from Sephora uh, in the shade Mahogany. And I just run my brush through it. I just couldn't imagine how waiting a year. And, like, that book that had some scenes that, like, hurt me so much. It was just so good. It's one of my favorite conclusions ever. Um... Oh, mm, it's so good. Like, y'all heard me rant and rave about Ray Rising all, like, last quarter, last year. So, I don't feel the need to go too much into depth and detail. But it is a fantastic book that I think you should read. Series you should try. If, you, if dystopian, sci-fi, that's really violent. It sounds like the type of thing. Um, and so... We're going to go to another Instagram question. Who is your book bae? Um, I don't really have a book bae. I don't think. But if I had to say this person is my book bae, I would say it's from a romance, obviously. Uh, it would be Keanu from uh, Love Unsolicited. Not me dipping this in the foundation, Lord, because I'm talking. Keanu from Love Unsolicited uh, by Alexandra Warren. He's just my type of man, okay? He is my type of man. And if you've read it, you know why. I won't spoil it for you. But his demeanor, the way he handles things, the way he approaches women and dating, I like it. Um, Another one, because we're still doing the same thing. If you could read one book again for the first time, what would it be? And this is from Element. If I could read a book for the first time. You know what I'm going to say. If I could reread a book again for the first time, it would be Rage of Dragons. Because I love that book so much. It's my favorite book. I'm going to talk about it later. Uh, it's my favorite book of all time. It just means so much to me. Um, I had such an amazing uh, reading experience with that book. And I have reread it, of course. And it still slapped, but it didn't slap the same as the first read. Obviously, because I knew what was going to happen. I was looking forward to certain things, uh, whatever. But, like, that first read through, I was just, oh, I was just, it was just so good. Um, so, uh, I will answer the contour question because I'm not, I'm kind of contouring, but not really because I'm not using contour. But we'll, we'll go with that. So, the contour question is a book that surprised you with its depth and for this one i'm going to talk about another like contemporary fiction romance and that is going to be beach read by emily henry so looking at the cover reading the title this one definitely sounds like it's going to be very like light and fluffy and like 
kind of shallow but that is definitely not the case and i think for a lot of people that's kind of what turned them off because they were expecting a light and fluffy bee tree and that's not what they got they got a story that was really about like grief and starting over and second chances and you know complicated familiar relationships and things like that and i actually really liked that the romance definitely was like the second fiddle to our characters like personal growth and development and i was just really into it so face is like bronzed like shape a bit so i was looking like a moon pie and now i have a little more definition so now i'm gonna go in with some cream blush uh where is my cream blush let's see all right so i'm gonna use the rare beauty one because i don't know where my makeup for everyone is and this is fine this is La Shade Love. 10 out of 10 recommend cream blush. So, for this one, I'm going to take this and just run some of my hand and dip my brush into it. Because it's very pigmented. And I'm not going for the super strong cheek today. Um, so, let's answer another question, shall we? funniest fantasy book that you've read the funniest fantasy book that you read funny i don't I'm, I'm not really a very funny gal i don't find a lot of things funny or at least things that i feel like are supposed to be funny i don't find them to be funny um well what's a book i laughed out loud reading i know that there are some let's go with house and a cerulean sea um let's go with that because i absolutely loved lucy and the kids and like their dynamic it was just so funny like lucy's <laughs> you know into the world i'm the devil and the antichrist type things like he would constantly go on i was very much entertained by that and so i thought that was very funny another question is how old are you from reads reads how old are you what do you do for a living do you have a reading schedule so i am 25 i'll be 26 in september and that's what how old i am what do i do i am a teacher i teach elementary school i'm a reading teacher and do i have a reading schedule no i read every day whenever i feel like it most evenings before bed i read when i have free time i kind of touch on this early but i read every day pretty much all right, so now that I have all of my cream products laid down, I'm just going to go over my concealer a little bit. Twitch that up, and then I'm going to powder. And then also, I have a little bit of concealer on my hand, but what I'm going to do to clean up under my jawline, I'm going to just dip my brush that I use to clean up my eyebrows and just draw a little bit of line here under where I did that contour to clean it up and to make sure that it didn't go down too low because that's going to drag the cheekbone down and it's going to give me a little more definition and I'm just turning my sponge over to the flat side like this and just pat that out and I'll probably need to do that step again when I go through with powder because I'm gonna put powder on top of all this and I don't want to lose it. And you of course wanna blend this out really well because you don't have like a very harsh line, that's weird. <laughs> and then I just go over with this. Alright, so for powder under my eyes, I mainly use the Huda Beauty powder. Um, this is the Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder in the shade Kunifa. And then I will also, like when I use the really bright one, I will use the one size translucent powder from like Patrick Star to like get really um, bright under eyes. And I'm filming in natural light, which is something I don't do often, but I thought, you know, Makeup looks best in natural light, but I would show y'all in this like format so that you can, you know, really see 
what is hitting on. I'm going to use my same sponge that I've been using all morning. And I'm going to just dip that in here. And I'm going to wipe it off just a little bit so that I get an even application of powder. So, I did the kind of question, bronzer, perfect summer read. Now, my perfect summer read, I feel like it's going to be very different from a lot of people's perfect summer read. Because one thing I am not is a seasonal reader. I read anything at any time. Any type of books that I like, I like, like fast-paced and violent. And so, reading what I like during the summer seems a good time. So, But I'm going to recommend a YA that's very fast-paced and pretty violent. And that is The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. It's the young adult sci-fi novel. And YA sci-fi has just really been slapping. This white book is making me look very orange by comparison. But I promise you, like, I'm not. I'm a regular color. Um, but this follows a character. Let me, let me move that stack a little bit. That follows a character who is... Um, a robot basically and she was created to be the companion and protector of a human person in space and that is all that she is and then her human is like drafted to go and kind of be a hostage to the emperor and, and she goes in her place and just chaos ensues from there there's a very very fast paced book lots of plot twists um i think uh, some of it is like wouldn't be surprising to you, especially as an adult reader. But I think it's really fun, really fast paced, really violent, and I like the like sciency elements. I like the religion aspect. I love religion in books, and I think it's really fun. So for bronzer, I use a variety of things to get my golden glow. But what I start with are the Fenty bronzers. Um, I'm gonna be using the shade Caramel Cutie to like even it out, and then uh, Coco Naughty for some depth. And then I also will go in with, if I want to like really, really be glowing, glowing and like snatch, I'll go in with the Jouer uh, Deep to Dark Bronzer Duo in Sun Glow and Sun Gaze. So um, let me do that. And because this one is lighter, I use a bigger brush. In the darker one, I'll go back to the smaller brush I used earlier. You want to make sure you get that neck, honey. Get up under that chin. So now that I'm done with that, I'm going to do blush and I'm going to clean up my cheek again. This one, the question for blush is a cringe worthy romance. And uh, for this one, I'm going to talk about my favorite book, <laughs> which is Rage of Dragons. If you've read this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But there's a romance in here that is very cringe worthy. I absolutely love that book. It's my favorite book. I actually wouldn't even change the romance because there's nothing I would change with my favorite book because I feel like that would make a difference but um that book is fantastic but that romance honey it is um questionable to say the least for blush I'm going to be using the covergirl high pigment blush in true blend so flush and the color is hot frenzy uh is very 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 pigmented but also like it really lasts a long time and it looks really good on my skin so the smallest little tap like literally just and so much is on the brush so i like a flushed look I feel like flushed and bronzy is kind of my thing um so another question from G from Book Girls, she said, Oh, that was aggressive. 
as y'all see, like I'm not joking about this blush. Your favorite makeup look that you did. Honestly, I think this is an easy one. My favorite makeup look that I did was my first look for To Sleep. Uh, I pop a picture in right here. I absolutely adore that makeup. Of course, I tried to recreate it. It wasn't the same because I was lazy, but <laughs> I enjoy both of those blue looks. I just popped them both in. Um, but if I was to say a look that a look that isn't that one, it's a more recent look. I didn't film this day. I had like a date. Um, and the my eye was like really sultry. I had finally found the perfect like nude liner um it was just the, the nude lip it was very nude it was like it was really giving what i needed it to give i'm gonna go in with like not a clean brush and just go over my blush but yeah that was um my favorite look and so i'm just toning this down a little bit um but blush is like the first thing that goes for me and i think that's true for a lot of people so it won't look like this like all day and then I'm going to just take the same sponge from earlier and just dip this into the powder a little bit. Dust some of that off and just clean up right up under here again. I look a little crazy right now, but I'm also going to um, contour my nose and clean that up whilst I'm doing that. Um, favorite childhood book uh, so my favorite childhood book I'm not going to go grab it because I need to like wrap this up my favorite childhood book was definitely Artemis Fowl so I love let me take a look I think between the two Artemis Fowl is like my guy but if you want to like my favorite book from when I was like a baby baby then it would be Good Night Moon it was my favorite book to read with my mom she would read to me and we would just say good night to everything and it was a great time so I use the MAC uh, Baina Bronze for my contour for my nose because it's like pretty soft and I'm just going to go right in and just do that there. Alright, so the next question is for highlight in a book that brightens your day. Of course, I'm gonna pick Heartstopper. All the volumes, this is just volume one. This series just makes me so happy. And whenever I'm feeling down or in a reading slump or just like, I wanna pick me up, I will reach for this. I've read it a couple different times and it just always slaps. It always does what I need it to do. It always just makes me feel really good and I just love reading it. So, 10 out of 10 recommend that graphic novel series. And, like, you can read that for free online on Tapas. Um, or you can, like, buy, obviously, the physical ones. But it is available in both methods. I'm going to be using another MAC product. This is the Hyper Real Glow Palette in the, the deep one. And this is in Shimmy Peach. And so, it's Glow Baby Glow, Shimmy Peach, and Peach Paradise. The one that I use the most. As you can see, is Glow Baby Glow. This looks fantastic on my skin tone. Um, and honestly, I would totally like buy this separately if it was available. Heartstopper is a graphic novel series about these two boys, Nick and Charlie. One who is gay, one who thinks he's straight. And they become friends and they fall in love. And it's just honestly so precious and so wholesome. As we get deeper into the series, they do cover some more serious topics like disordered eating and things like that. But it's very clear. It has like trans characters. It has non-binary characters. It has bisexual characters, gay characters, lesbians. I mean, just everything. And it's very a queer normative story. Um, it's just very precious. The art is really cute. And I know it's like being made into, I don't know if it's a movie or a TV show. But I know... Alice Oseman recently like posted a picture of Nick and the people who were cast as Nick and Charlie and it was just so freaking precious so I'm not gonna do a lot of highlighter right now what I'm gonna do is grab a brush we'll just grab this one and then start to dust away this powder this way the excess and then I'm gonna go in and blend it out um and do that so let's see are there any more questions let's see um 
I think, I think I've, I've answered all of these. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and answer the rest of the questions while I finish up my makeup. The next one is eyeshadow and it is, um, show us the book with your favorite colors. And so what I do with this clean brush, I'm going to blend this out. Yes. But I also, have I put real blush on? Yes, I have. I also am going to take like a clean brush as well and I go over like my whole cheek area to blend everything together. The sun is like coming out a little bit more. So if the light is changing, I do apologize. And I'm actually going to go in and like brush over that nose product. All right. Um, I'm not going to do very much on the eyes today. But a book with my favorite colors. Let's talk about Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. If you know me, you watch my videos, you see I wear a lot of black. And also my sisters are almost always gold. So this is like, and white. I love white. I always love a white top. Um, this is very much the aesthetic here. Assassin's Apprentice is one of my favorite series. One of my favorite characters and fits. Um, I just adore that series so much. It is a coming of age fantasy about a young boy who is essentially an orphan and he is dropped off at the palace because he is a royal bastard and his grandfather looks at him and decides that he wants him to be trained up in the ways of the assassin and we follow him there and like he just has a very tragic life. So eyes, I'm going to use this MAC Art Library and Flamboyant palette. Um, I'm missing one. But that's fine. Not gonna do anything fancy. Um, just gonna put a little something, something in the crease and keep it. So I'm done with my eyes, nothing fancy, like I said. Um, but the next question is for eyeliner and I'm gonna do my waterline liner. And the question for eyeliner is a dark and mysterious book and I can't think of anything more dark and mysterious than House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danieluski. Recently read this um, for the Literally Dead book club, which is Kayla's book club from Books and Lala. Um, we read that one and what an experience it was so house of leaves is a book that's a book within a book within a book basically and it is about a house essentially it's about a house is bigger on the inside than on the outside and a research analysis paper of the record of this house so a photojournalist made a home movie about this house and then th there are people analyzing that and then there's this one guy who is analyzing the people's analysis and then there's another guy who's analyzing that guy's analysis of the story uh, and it's a really wacky narrative you don't really know what's true you don't know what isn't true you don't know who to trust who to believe anything like that um, and it was a very much an experience um, I think the Navitson record, which is like the actual like home movie about the house is bigger on the inside than on the outside, is like the most interesting part. It is a book that is kind of is very complex and not simple to read. There's no one correct way to read it. Um, but I think that if you're a person who's looking for a unique experience and you like dark, twisty, 
um, even like mixed media type books, I would highly recommend that one. So this is a nude liner that I'm putting in my waterline from Too Faced. It's the Too Faced Killer Liner um, in the shade Killer Cashmere, maybe? I think it's a shade. I could be wrong though, but it's the best like nude liner that I found. And I'm not really going to do much on the top. I'm going to put a little bit of liner because I'm going to be wearing lashes. But nothing, nothing crazy. For my eyeliner on the top, I'm going to take this Urban Decay Liner in Whiskey. This is like my favorite brown eyeliner. And I'm going to just run this along my lash line. It looks a little crazy right now with like that really bright <laughs> um waterline but it'll look fine i promise so i'm literally just gonna run this along my lash line a brown liner is really great when you want something a little bit softer okay and you see like it just made it a little bit more smoky and then i'm gonna go over this with a brush and probably eyeshadow as well so if you're not good at like wing liner which honestly i'm not um but you want to like wear liner use eyeshadow or use like a creamy liner and then just go over it with eyeshadow and just like smudge it you don't have to have like a wing or whatever you can still get the look from my liner so i'm gonna take a like small pencil brush and dip it into this brown right here and just a little tap into it's like lighter brown and I'm gonna just go over that I'm so sorry if you all can hear the noise outside because my neighbors are being very active it seems and I'm gonna do that again on the other eye and this just helps the lashes blend in with your natural lashes okay so that's what that looks like pre-lashes um let's see the next one is mascara and i don't put my mascara on until after i apply my lashes but i'm gonna do that off camera so for long book I'm going to recommend The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington, book one in the Lycanius Trilogy. This is a great classic fantasy, uh, and I think if you're a fan of, like, Eye of the World, or you want to read kind of like The Wheel of Time or Lord of the Rings, something like that, but, like, it's too old-timey and very dense, we recommend this because, A, it's only a trilogy as well, and it kind of does a lot of the same things. Um, but in a way that's really approachable like that book felt really nostalgic even though it was my first time reading it had never read it before and I was unfamiliar with it but like the act of reading that book really just made me feel so cozy and so warm and like this is a place that I had been before and this is a world that I just wanted to stay in and we follow in this world the augurs are like these almost got like people who could see the future and they fell a number of years ago in this like great war and um they people who have the type of power are instantly killed and our main character it turns out he might be one of them it's kind of the, the premise so for lashes these are my favorite lashes these are the house of lashes iconic light so the, the actual iconics are a little bit more intense but these are the ones that i like to wear which i mean for some people that still might be intense but that is a bit of a lighter fluffier lash for me uh, and i also use the house of lashes um lash glue so I'm going to pop my lashes on which i say pop like it's going to take me a second because i'm not the best at applying lashes you know it is what it is but i'm gonna apply my lashes and then um i'm gonna come back to do my lips and like my final touches and we'll go from there well actually i have to let my lash glue dry for a little bit so i'll probably do lips with you all and then just show you the final look
All right, so while my lash glue is drying, uh, I'm gonna just wipe my lips off. I hate foundation lips, uh, so I'm just gonna wipe my lips off. Because foundation and other products and powder, all that tends to end up on your lips, like you can see. And it definitely colors how your lip product looks. All right, so my go-to looks are a nude and a red and i think i'm gonna give y'all my signature red today i'm in a red mood so let's do it so the question for red is your favorite book kiss and while i'm not motivated nominating this book specifically because of the kiss i'm just nominating it or like recommending it because of the romance uh that one i want to say is spoiler alert by olivia day it's one of my favorite romances i've talked about it quite a bit and it's about like fan fiction and like kind of like a play on game of thrones and we have a plus size main character and that plus size rep is like really amazing and i just really felt seen and loved in this book um and it's just really good. I recently did a live show with Chanel and uh, Mina and Liv from uh, Liv's library, I think, over on Chanel's channel. It's one of my favorite of the last quarter. And like an honorable mention, one of my favorite romances of all time. But let's get into the lip. So my favorite lip is a red. And I always use the same liner. So this is the Makeup Forever Color Artist Pencil in full red. And my go-to um, lip, where is it? The red that I always wear is like my favorite red, but I've been experimenting with trying to find a replacement for that one because it's really kind of hard to get sometimes. Um, it's a red from Colored Rain. I don't even know where it is right now because I'm trying out a new red today, one that I think is close. So we're gonna be using the Melt Cosmetics Liquid Lip Set in Immoral immoral um so i'm gonna line my lips fill them in with this liner and then top with the liquid lip and then after that i will put the finishing touches as well as my lashes on are the lashes dry we'll see all right so here's the combo starting with the liner Well, that is kind of it. That's how I do my makeup. And we talked a little bit about some of the books that I read and some of the books that I think that fit the prompts. Um, I am by no means a professional makeup artist. I do my makeup the way that I like. And my makeup routine changes relatively often. Um, but thank you to everyone who... Um, left me a question and you know for watching if you made it to the end of this very long video leave a lipstick emoji and i will see you all in the next one bye bye